Welcome to Republican Roundtable. I'm Max Reimer. As we continue our series on interviewing some of our Republican candidates, it's easy to talk to those who are running for legislative office or in some cases the gubernatorial office because we know what they do. Today, however, we have a guest who is near and dear to my heart, former state legislator, mm -hmm. former lieutenant governor, Candidate. former Candidate. Yeah, lieutenant governor candidate and former boss of mine, yes. Pam Myra, who is running for state auditor. Yes. Pam, thank yeah, you so much you. for joining us on thank the Republican you. Roundtable. Thank you. State auditor. What does the state auditor do? The state auditor is responsible for accountability and transparency in how government funds are used and oversees um, financial audits and performance reviews. Okay. Very simple. And given your background, you have a, a background that's very catered to a yes, position like this. For, for our viewers at home, explain a little bit about who you were prior to running for this, for this office. All right. Well, I do have the credentials. Of, I'm a certified public accountant with an active license. I'm a former audit manager at an international public accounting firm, KPMG. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a former legislator, as you alluded to. I served in the Minnesota legislature from the beginning of 2011 to the beginning of 2015. Okay. What led you to get into this race specifically? Specifically, actually, I was asked probably a hundred times to run for this race, um, but I would always just automatically say no. And it was a very personal reason. Uh, back in t 2009, I talked to my dad and I said, Dad, I'm thinking about getting into politics. What do you think? And he said, well, if you run for politics, run for an office where you can really make a difference. Mm -hmm. Run for an office where you really care about the issues. And then he paused and said, don't run for state auditor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he actually said that. Wow. You know, so for these n a number of years, uh, you know, I just would write it off. And uh, actually, I did run for uh, the House, yep. and I won twice. Yep. And so... Um, this last fall, I was asked again and again and again. And then the last time I was asked, you know, I thought, you know, I'm going to look at this and give it mm -hmm. a second thought. And so I talked to my husband. But the most important thing that I did is I actually went back to um, the law. There's mm -hmm. about 25 pages of statute on what the state auditor does. And I looked at that. And um, I found myself reading it not as a potential candidate, not as um, a former audit manager of an international public accounting firm, yep. but as a taxpayer. And I started shaking because I became angry wow. um, at the need for it to be updated to really protect taxpayers. And there are what's called uh, government auditing standards, and those need to be changed. There's some things, conflicts in there. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, after giving it some uh, prayerful thought and getting it, I decided to run for this. And um, one of the things I thought to myself is, is um, well, there's issues here, but who better? Right. Who better to run than somebody who is a certified public accountant, who does have experience as an auditor, and I realized that I could be a catalyst to cause change, to improve um, the financial situation here for uh, taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Talking about campaigning for yeah. state auditor, yeah. yeah, I think like I alluded to in my introduction, it's one thing to say, I'm going to go to the legislature and I'm going to get this bill passed or I'm going to be governor yes. and I'm going to use the bully pulpit to get this accomplished. As state auditor, the role in and of itself is more analytical. It's looking at uh, inefficiencies within government. How do you campaign for auditor? How do you, how do you set yourself apart in this arena of politics? You know, it's really easy. It really is easy because, I, and I think actually taxpayers, Minnesotans really care about this. Uh -huh. uh, when I was in the legislature, I chief authored two bills on government transparency. And they were both passed unanimously in the House and they were eventually signed by the governor. Um, and I found that people across Minnesota, even nationwide, really care about government transparency and accountability. Mm -hmm. And so um, okay. when I am out doing uh, parades or wherever I am, you know, I will tell people I'm running for auditor and I'm an auditor. And they're like, yes, <laughs> I'm 
I mean, that's so that's wonderful. That's kind of important. Yeah, though, you know. Think. And um, I was in a parade this last Sunday, and I was just stunned at how many people, you know, over and over again said, yeah, you know, we need a certified public accountant to mm -hmm. be in this role. We need somebody who has the background, the education. I found, and I've been finding, that uh, voters really get it. They, mm -hmm. they want accountability, and they want transparency in how government uh, resources are used, and they get it that it's important to have the background, to mm -hmm. have the understanding. You talked about in the legislature, uh, you authoring two bills that had unanimous support. Pam, I'm wondering, in during your time in the legislature, did you see anything, because that's a front row yeah. seat to government yeah. inefficiency at times. Yeah. Did you see anything in particular that really kind of piqued either your curiosity or made you angry while you were at the legislature to say, hey, beyond just uh, transparency in and of itself, this part of government needs, yeah. to, needs to change. Did you see anything like that? Well, there, um, there are a number of offices in state government. There is the Office of um, State Auditor, which is a constitutional office, mm -hmm. and the, the state auditor answers to the taxpayer, okay? It's very important, and does a, a variety of different types of audits and reviews, okay? Mm -hmm. What you're talking about is more of what uh, the legislative uh, auditor does. Now, the legislative auditor is uh, under the direction the exact direction of the legislature, not the taxpayer. And so the roles are very different. Mm -hmm. And so um, what I would like to see is that um, the legislature would change, augment statute, that the state auditor would do what's called performance reviews. Mm -hmm. uh, right now that is not in statute. Uh, what is in statute is you know audits of cities and counties and, and oversight over the um, auditing firms that um, do those audits if, if the state auditor doesn't do them. Mm -hmm. But what I would like to see is uh, the state auditor being able to have part of the function of doing performance audits. Okay. And I think there's a real appetite for that out there. Uh, when I was in the legislature in 2011, uh, the Republicans uh, voted for what was called a sunset uh, commission. Uh, the sunset commission is a is a uh, was supposed to look at different programs and look and see if they were still fulfilling their mission, and mm -hmm. if they weren't fulfilling their mission, to give, you know, information to the legislature, you know, so things could change. We had talked beforehand before the show started about the the state auditor and the legislative auditor, and that there's conversation around the state auditor just going away. You had made mention of that. You've said before that you disagree with that. You don't. You're obviously running for the state right. auditor position. Um, why is that necessary? Why not just move to a, a, the legislative audit, auditor in and of itself? I really like philosophically that the taxpayer, the people of Minnesota, the voters mm -hmm. are in control, and with the state auditor, it's their voice. They are the ones voting uh, for the state auditor. When it comes to the legislative auditor. The legislative auditor is under the control of the legislature, mm -hmm. and the legislature's c composition can change, you know. And it's not all the people who get the voice; it is wh whatever party is in control of the House and the Senate. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so th that those dynamics are very different. Uh, I believe that it's really important that we keep the role of the state auditor, um, so that it is answerable directly to the public. Mm -hmm. um, it, the, the whole idea of being a CPA, the P stands for public, mm -hmm. and that is who we answer to, the public, to serve the public interest. Um, we had also talked beforehand about Rebecca Otto and, and her role and some of the actions that she's taken uh, as state auditor, mm -hmm. specifically about there's a situation with the counties that she actually took to the Supreme Court where... Right. The county said, hey, we want to have the freedom and the ability to, to have our own auditing service or auditor come in for issues that dealt with the county. And Rebecca Otto said, well, no, you have to use me. It, right. it, as, as auditor, how would you have handled that yeah. whole situation differently? I, I was not in the legislature at the time that uh, that ori original legislation was passed. Uh, that was in 2015, and, and I 
uh, my service ended at the beginning of 2015. If I had been in the legislature, I would have voted for it as well. Okay. Uh, it, I think it, it, it was good because what it did is it provided uh, independence uh, for, uh, for those uh, audits. Also, um, what that legislation was allowing is the same thing that has been allowed for cities for a long time. Cities have been able to choose uh, if they want to uh, go to um, have a, have a uh, public accounting firm do their audit or not. Mm -hmm. So that ha choice has been afforded to cities for a long time and now it's being afforded to counties as well. Okay. So they can choose between having their audit done by uh, a public accounting firm or by the state uh, state auditor. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I am fine with it. I think it's good. What the Minnesota Supreme Court ruling uh, stated is that it reaffirmed the role of the state auditor to have that oversight over those accounting firms that will be doing those audits of those cities and counties. And so uh, there are what's called uh, quality assurance reviews okay. that are very, very important to make sure that the auditing firms that are coming into those cities and counties are, are doing, uh, doing their audits effectively and well. You said one word, and I like to highlight this word, especially with the constitutional offices. Uh, that word being independence. Yes. So independence. You, you were a Republican legislate, legislator. Right. Uh, you're currently on the Republican roundtable. You are the endorsed Republican candidate right. for state auditor. How do you guarantee independence knowing that you come from a, a political and in some, in some cases a partisan background during your legislative career? Sure. I think each and every person has a philosophical view, yeah. right? We all do. Uh, but the question is, do we pursue that? Do we use the office as a, a soapbox? And I will not. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, though I do have different political views. I have a voting record. But when I walk mm -hmm. into that office, I am a state auditor. And it is very important uh, to remain independent. And that is, independence is the uh, as an unconditional requirement of auditors. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the most important that uh, we remain independent uh, so that we can be objective when we look at uh, a particular audit. As state auditor, I actually will not be doing those audits. Mm -hmm. I will be leading the office and setting the tone. Uh, I will be um, wanting to make sure that our state aud auditor's office is following uh, generally accepted government auditing standards. And um, so uh, it, it is possible. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, we each have views, but we can we can uh, separate ourselves and uh, make sure that uh, we are looking at um, at these audits independently. You made mention that, and you had somebody in the parade actually tell you it's nice to have an auditor yes. who, who actually will be the auditor. Yes. Within your professional background, Pam, what I'm what I'm kind of curious about. Obviously, you don't need to be a, a CPA to run for the position of auditor right. um, within that. And you don't like to be too prescriptive, but have you seen flaws in the system or in the current office of the auditor that led you to, to run for auditor? Okay. Um, other than looking at statute and yep. realizing that there's some deficiencies, there are some problems. Uh, one of the things that is a problem in, in statute is that, uh, and I, probably most people would not recall this, but going back to the 1990s, there was uh, an office called the uh, State Treasurer. Okay. Okay, and that office was removed and the responsibilities were folded into the state auditor's office. Those are actually conflicting responsibilities and I would seek to separate those out uh, through legislation. I've talked to some legislators and leadership and, and expressed my views and, and uh, expressed my concerns and they have said that, you know, um, that they would be willing to carry my, my bill and would be able to advocate for, for uh, separating that out. Um, another thing that I have noticed in, in um, one of the things that transpired with this case that was before the Supreme Court mm -hmm. is the legislative auditor did a review and had some concerns about how the state auditor had performed. And um, the state auditor uh, had replied and it didn't appear that the state auditor realized uh, government auditing standards uh, are surrounded around 
talking to responsible officials. And so the legislature actually responded to that and wrote stat er, a bill, mm -hmm. and it was passed unanimously in the Senate. And it ended up getting in an omnibus bill in the uh, in the House, and uh, went to the governor, but he vetoed it. But it is important to know these these standards. Mm -hmm. And um, the current uh, the current auditor is not an auditor, and so she, apparently she was unaware of that. But being an auditor. And being a certified public accountant with an active license and, and con continuing my professional education, I am aware of those things. And so I will be able to set the tone at the top, which is very important. That is very important. Yes, yeah. On the campaign trail, what kind of reception are you getting out there? You know, it's been great. Yeah. It really has been great. I, um, I love, I love going to parades, and and I'm not one of these politicians who sits in the back of a car and waves. <laughs> I am the politician that is there, shaking everybody's hand. Yeah. You know, having to run at times to catch up with my unit or whatever. But I am um, out there shaking people's hands and talking to them, and it it's fun. It really is fun. Uh, mm -hmm. Shaking hands, looking people in the eye telling them my credentials and asking for their vote. And people have been very, very responsive and being, saying, you know, like this last Sunday, um, so many people are saying, yes, Pam, I'll vote for you. You That's know, and awesome. it's just, yeah, it's, it's very encouraging. Um, it's, it's been a really positive experience out there campaigning. I've loved it, just loved it. I hope I can meet everyone, but of course that's not possible, but. It is a statewide, it yeah, is a statewide it is a election. Statewide, yes, it, it is. It's just, yeah. the task seems incredibly daunting yeah. to campaign yeah. on the statewide level. When you are going out and, and meeting people and talking about the role of auditor and then trying to connect the role of auditor to people's everyday lives in Minnesota. Uh, you're getting good reception, I assume, based on the fact that you are, in and of yourself, mm -hmm. an auditor, a yeah. CPA. How are you relating this position to people's everyday lives? Um, I think, like like I said before, it's easy to do that as a legislative mm -hmm. candidate. Right. But people, I think, at least from my perspective, need to feel like they're connecting with the position and that it's important and that you're the person to vote for when it comes to the legislative auditor or uh, the, uh, the state auditor on their ballot. How do you make this make sense to people? I have been finding that it makes a lot of sense to people already. I okay. mean, it hasn't been a hard push. People get it. People get, uh, I've been using hashtag auditor for auditor. People get that. Um, but on a p very personal level, um, in uh, 2012 in Dixon, Illinois, there was an ineffective audit done, mm -hmm. okay, uh, by a local firm. Uh, and it turned out that the treasurer of that, that small community of 15,000 yep. people embezzled over $53 million. That $53 million, what that was wow. is, yeah, think about that. That was over $3,300 for every, every person in that community, whether they were a child, whether they were unemployed, were employed by the city or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was because of an ineffective audit. So it just highlights to me how important it is that we have effective audits. And it's really hard to have an effective audit if you have no understanding of what an audit is or how it's conducted. And people seem to, to, to understand because, you know, Pam, we had, uh, we had Doug Wardlow on who's running for attorney general and people mm -hmm. understand the implications yeah. of yeah. voting for yeah. the gubernatorial candidate, for their legislative candidates. Yeah. At times, the constitutional offices, though they are some of the most yeah. important positions, yeah. seem to be, um, they at least have the least awareness. Uh, what... We've had Republican candidates run for this position before. Yes. Is there anything within your campaign right now that you feel you're doing differently than other candidates have done in the past who have not been successful in this race? Well, I, one of the things is that it's an open race. Mm -hmm. uh, the incumbent who has been there for three terms is uh, not running again. So that's a big advantage. Yep. Uh, and so uh, we're more on a level, uh, level field uh, competing uh, with the Democrat and Republican candidate. Uh, highlighting my qualifications as a certified public accountant with an active license. Um, experience as a former audit manager mm -hmm. of an international public accounting firm. And also uh, having the experience of serving in the legislature uh, for four years. Uh, so that will really help me in uh, interacting with the legislature and the governor and uh, pursuing these 
uh, improvements, uh, these updates to the statute. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. um, those are the things that are, we'll be highlighting. But I really honestly, Max, I really think Minnesotans get it. They really want accountability. They want transparency in how their tax dollars are used. Right. You know, going back to the sticks in Illinois issue where this uh, city treasurer embezzled all that money. Just one city. One Fif city of 53 000, over $53 million. Wow. You know, I'm, nobody asked yeah. the question, why do you have three mansions and 400 <laughs> yeah. horses? They, they, they didn't ask that oh question uh, because of a problem of independence. But, you know, each, each year the city suffered. Roads could not be improved. Mm -hmm. People on uh, the g government workers uh, were laid off. Uh, government services were, you know, taken down honestly to the bone mm -hmm. because they didn't have money. And this treasurer kept saying, "Well, it's budget cuts," but in actuality, she was pocketing all the money that was coming into the city, it, mm -hmm. and it was just terrible. So um, I think Minnesotans get it that when money is not being used right the way it's supposed to right. be, that it's not there for them when they want it, when they want their roads repaired, when they want those services provided by their city and their county. Mm -hmm. Pam, how can people learn more about your campaign and get involved? Well, I have a website, which is www.pamforauditor.com, or they can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, at Pam for Auditor. And what do you have coming up on the campaign campaign trail? What can we look forward to in terms of events or where are you oh, going to be next? Just, it, it's constantly filling in. I'm sure. I am going all over the state. Um, within a given week, I probably travel 1,000 to 2,000 miles. Okay. Um, and I'm, you know, just crisscrossing the state. And um, so it, I'm loving it. I'm, I, you know, I love this stuff. Yeah, yeah I, I really do. So, which is a good thing, right? Absolutely. You know, and what's really great is I have a wonderful husband who loves doing it with me. So, you know, it's great to have that family. And kids. <laughs> and kids, that's right. You know them. Yes. So, yeah. Saw yeah, them at the convention. Yeah. yeah. And so, very good. Yeah, it's great to have that family support for this big adventure. It is a big adventure. Yes. Pam Myra. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us. This has been the Republican Roundtable. I'm Max Reimer. Until next time. Thank <laughs> you.